Welcome everyone to another Linux update here. Today shorter, maybe more interesting. Please stand by. Hello, are we live? Should be live anyway. Amazing. YouTube technology, better live stuff for zero drop frames. Yeah, we are live, I think at least. Anyway. So you have seen in previous videos and I'm still building here that you probably may, or actually today it's not a cool retro vintage terminal, but whatever. Our side project here building the ceiling only Linux distribution flavor of T2 of our source build unsuccessful one man Linux distribution show here. And that did well, we built ceiling and ceiling only mean, meant also because we can't compile glibc because of too many GNU isms in there. That we used Musil, another alternative smaller C library. So far, so good. I have it even in production. Plenty of videos, like three or something. Mostly it worked, except some yeah, lip standard CXX whatever stuff there. But for the most part, it worked a little bit. Yeah, with some rough edges there that eventually, with building and patches and configuration, it's a little bit polishing. But so far so good. Um, however, performance was not amazing. I had a couple of benchmarks there. However, the performance most likely not amazing because maybe the C++ SDL because. Uh, not as much as Musil. You see there, I, I said this in the previous video, many variables, not only from GCC to Clang or Clang, but also from glibc to Musil. So for those, I didn't have individual performance characteristic numbers. Maybe we could do this another day if you're interested. And the biggest change maybe because Clang, LLVM, certainly a huge C++ code base. So maybe actually the biggest change of all of them the STL, because when I benchmark this with compiling stuff, then we exercise for a huge part the compiler. And if the C++ library in Clang LLVM slash lib CXX or so, um, is it in there? Well, wherever it is in, in one of those packages, um, certainly maybe the biggest uh, thing there. And so the resulting compiler was not the fastest, but whatever. We did this mostly for keeping it small and simple because we, for 3D, for the 3D graphics stack with, stack with Mesa, we anyway need LLVM. So my idea was to save a huge amount of stuff with bin utils, GCC maybe. And um, I had a, a major problem. So the Linux kernel I could not yet compile because of computed Gotos or ASM Gotos, so that's what we will see in a second. So many esoteric features that even I don't personally use in any of my projects. Of course, the Linux kernel people need to make use of all the esoteric GCC compiler features. But um, let's run this here quickly before this goes out of, um, out of context. What is really sad is I posted this before, there you see so much uh, effort spent here and all this kind of stuff and then at the end it doesn't even work. Because I said this before, I usually don't even update to better versions, alpha, beta, something. This was a once in a lifetime or yeah, a few occasions because the LLVM 9 release candidate stuff here promises uh, support for this. Previously, I patched this in. There were patches. Of course, neither Foronix nor I have done here all the work. Of course, all the people from Google and where not all the other LLVM Clang developers. And um, yeah, this is this kind of stuff. You configure all the stuff like last night, four hours for Mason Ninja and stuff like just to keep all the stuff uh, compiling and stuff and then it doesn't even work. I mentioned this probably in another live stream or something. So yeah, you compile LVM Clang latest release and doesn't even work here with command line error option limited coverage experimental registered more than once. That is their command line argument factory stuff. So somehow this command line classes or whatever object instances are instantiated more than once. And you see with just live compiling here uh, stuff. I have, yeah, okay, there's so much to that amazing uh, source directory. What does not, uh, can't make this up. Anyway, um, I even on this, I debugged around so you see um, where all your time is going when you do open source, you do all this stuff for fun or whatever, nobody pays you and at the end you don't even have something working. It is of course a nice 
lovely fail here live on YouTube. We get uh, to the, just need to optimize here my build time and get some stuff done. We continue in a second here only live programming on YouTube. Oh, I commented the dot dot out. Obviously, that probably ain't too good. Let me shortly fix this. Um, this is, I even on this, I spent probably over an hour debugging around. Um, meaning I built this with some debug printfs, with debug symbols, uh, debugged around and couldn't really yet figure out. I even submitted a bug report there, something I don't do that often because usually nothing nothing happens. Like just with this, I published there on bug, Bugzilla or whatever that was. And um, then I don't even get any feedback or whatsoever. Probably seeing as this unsuccessful woman distribution guy, whatever. And um, yeah, this obviously I commented here unsuccessfully too much out. Let's make this that varapen C make up. Certainly we need this amazing dots in there. Because what you see, I commented out here build shared lips. This is because I was wondering why does it work for other people but not for myself. And I already debugged around there. I thought maybe some object file with this amazing mod can't mix this up. Amazing modern build systems, maybe some object is linked in twice, that would be a more logical thing to expect. I didn't so I even analyzed the builds there. You see you sit there 15 minutes analyzing all the build artifact stuff and, and poking around there with object dump and whatever. My suspicion is uh, somehow this command line, command line option object things there are somehow instantiated obviously more than once. It's also not only one you see uh, by the way, probably we still have the arrow, right? Yeah, um, it's not even this. I debugged around there. I yeah added some printfs and GDB stepped around there. So a lot of, I'm not sure if all, but at least like 10 or so of those are like registered twice. And I even tried, tried to hack around there and like, like fail this gracefully, but then it also crashed. But anyway, just here's a, uh, pre-story to this prehistory just to keep you here um, totally up to date update on where is all the time going if you do some Linux distribution or other operating system research stuff. So the Pharonix guys beat us to that although I guess they most likely use some pre-built um, binary stuff. Upcoming ceiling I by the way wonder if I if there is an update release candidate wait a second there why is this five three oh okay this is uh C -Link. Mm, whatever whatever version number they had so let me just double ch check that we also have this here correctly on display so ceiling wait a second ceiling ten master what Fails to build with the latest code on ceiling. Yeah, so you see um, also for uh, those people there, stuff fails. And again, if you Google this, I'm not the only one. So this is a recurring theme. Uh, and this is apparently if you have multiple installs and they source the wrong shared objects or multi of those and even with um, other OpenCL and um, other AMD, whatever stuff you would have an issue. So it's not only my unsuccessful vomit distribution stuff, it, it's a recurring theme that sometimes it happens. And maybe if you are lucky in 10 minutes on the horizon, if this shared stuff is related to this, maybe because there must be a reason why it works for some people. And a fun fact, the same build style worked the last years, so right? Although maybe I recently tweaked it a little bit, but anyway, be, before with the latest stable release, it works. So in any case, it is, uh, it is a regression. And uh, the shared stuff, I think, is preferable. Uh, otherwise, you have the static archives linked into your Mesa 3D drivers, of course, making all the executables larger. And then if you update something, you need to rebuild everything if you want the same bugs fixed in the Mesa 3D drivers. That is why we have shared objects and not static objects. But yeah, anyway. Um, so not really sure for comparisons to this uh, Clang 10 SVM builds the same kernel source as Cave rebuild. So actually I'm not really sure why he used Clang 10 get SVN master now. Not really sure. AMD GPU kernel module failed to okay, so because um, okay, so apparently it built except the AMD GPU kernel module, okay. Um, you see, so not only I'm the only unlucky one who always hits all the regressions and bugs here. And the results, however, are not the most super 
most amazing. Uh, comments in the audience, now I look like Kevin Mitnick, otherwise I look like Edward Snowden, now I also look like Kevin Mitnick soon, I probably need to stay here in my basement and can't take international flights anymore, thank you very much for that. We had this discussion already in another live stream, it's my amazing passport that, passport that was falling apart. And Anyway, so the results are not the most amazing, certainly you can open the site here with nice advertisements yourself to support the site, obviously we give you a shout out and credit where credit is due, but just what you expect from regular control flow stuff, so not like massive single instruction multiple data, parallelism of loops and such, um, vectorization of loops, so just old-fashioned control follow, if then else, if register, set register, if some options, if some arguments, so not really that much, that an amazing glorified assembler front end that C compiler is, can do here. And so most of the results are in mostly margin of error or something, some, some a little bit, but yeah, you get the idea. Also, I did not want to do this for performance. For me, this is not too much of a surprise. I just wish I could, well, it, it would build for me, and maybe in 10 minutes with this without the shared options, maybe we are so lucky. And um, yeah, otherwise not really that much to see, but I understand you see also he um, needs to do the same, just like we here on our unsuccessful YouTube channel. We also need to publish for our boring ninja streams and uh, not as amazing compiles. Although uh, maybe at least here the tinkering is somewhat interesting to see what kind of random stuff certainly can occur here with new releases, certainly the same on Debian, Ubuntu, Arch Linux and so on. So even if we find there's something, I will probably not, if this works without the shared stuff, then I will probably update my bug reports there, but probably not spend more time trying to debug this myself because the code base is just so huge. That is what we need, the new AMD Ryzen 3950 there for. Yeah, so as you see, just as expected, um, let's see, one result was slightly just a little bit. Yeah, so here, um, yeah, milliseconds, less is better. Um, yeah, micro benchmarks, some of them anyway. Uh, kernel build was running slower on both systems. Some Java benchmarks. Yeah, to me, not the greatest surprise. I just wanted to share that, yeah, as you see, it is possible just when you have a working compiler anyway. And um, yeah, although in a, in a way it's of course also a good thing that the performance is not too different except here in this hack bench, whatever that is hacking, uh, that is actually at least on the Core i9 significantly faster here. So you see sometimes it's much more different, more than margin of error, although interesting that um, this is so different. Maybe it is some loop unrolling or whatever that for apparently Ryzen, it is that different here than for the Core i9 9900K. But yeah, so for me, I will probably, if this actually builds here eventually, that we, by the way, have here a nice load, right? 16 threads, and yeah, soon waiting for the next. That is what you need those for. And uh, so even with this, I compiled this here already. So even you see 64 gigabyte, do you really need this? Well, unless you have 200 Chrome tabs, then even for compiling here some relatively large code base, then only 11 gigabyte are used, 2 gigabyte cached. Yeah, so there you have that. But uh, obviously when you compile a whole distribution, then, yeah, but even then, except if you build, um, like open office or at least then you can really build everything in tempfs right otherwise with just 16 gigabyte or so then with tempfs you sometimes run out of memory especially if you forget to disable debug symbols um comments in the audience what's your favorite distro and desktop environment yeah you you ask the guy who is running his own unsuccessful on my linux distribution my favorite distribution obviously is my own um t2 thanks for asking um, that is obviously that one. Maybe you probably are new to this channel, I guess. Um, that is a source distribution similar to Gento, previously known as Rock Linux, where I joined in 1998, 20 years ago. 
became stable release maintainer first the desktop rock linux then stable release maintainer and then i forked it because that is what usually open source projects do they fork each other after 10 years and yeah nowadays only t2 exists because our focus was more um, embedded systems and such and um, yeah while we wait um, the stream you don't need to worry the stream will not be four hours or whatever it was last night we only wait here for tail fr adm lock uh, ceiling which we are done with so many percent 90 year soon coming to an end t2 of course built from source uh, with your for your target that you can define so you can use it for build for wireless access points um, firewalls your desktop desktop environment well uh, previously i uh, two, 20 years ago i used gnome 1.4 then i used kde3 and then everything become too, became too large with kde uh, kde4 or whatever that was this plasma stuff and gnome 3 i guess i switched back to just using this black box stuff because i usually don't need much more than a fancy editor and some terminals and then at least I don't have uh, all this craft of 100 packages from lib, gnome, desktop, shared utils, XML, data schemes and whatever. Nowadays, of course, we are playing catch up. I've not in T2 updated KDE and gnome too much, but um, we've done so huge monstrous streams for six or seven hours going through quite some packages, not quite there yet. So in the future, we will have all the gnome and KDE packages, especially if you join and help. And slots for Segway. Yes, Slackware is uh, fine. Uh, you can uh, have nothing against any of those amazing distributions. Although I personally find all the many distributions are criticized here recurrently. Um, all the many distributions, 1001 distribution. And to be fair with my distribution, when we did this in 1998, Rock Linux was one of the 50 or I don't know, 20 reasonable or I don't know, distributions, of course, since 1998, it exponentially exploded. Um, yeah, let's try to run ceiling. So uh, run whatever you like. Um, I'm, I'm here not to convince you to buy into my free open source Linux stuff, but um, to not only entertain you, but also maybe educate you, teach you some new stuff and how stuff works. So this build here, let's see, are we so lucky that this Hey, no input files, my guess was after. Um, but there you see, um, so yeah, real regression, I probably should report this. This um, theoretically, no, I need to think shortly, very theoretically, maybe we better make a second stream. So this is what I've done is um, using here, changing this, actually I can div develop. Um, I commented here out this LLVM build, LLVM dialib and on and whatsoever here. And yes, it's dialib and what is this even build LLVM link? Ah, build and link, whatever, you probably need both, whatever. So yes, yeah, this, this dynamic chat library stuff apparently at fault here. Um, so yeah, quite some hours wasted on this nonsense. Um, now I can finally maybe try to build a Linux kernel. Maybe we do this in a second live stream just to keep the topics separated but yeah there you see it it's not the fault of my um, chaotic unsuccessfully um, unmaintained old garbage which obviously it is not nicely sorted up to date whatsoever but yeah regressions wherever i look so not making this stuff up it, this is just yeah um, anyway thanks for watching you have here some results uh, all the stuff that can happen performance is similar it is of course not the worst thing except some outliners yeah, although it is never good if stuff is, I don't know, 5% slower there sometimes maybe, but for us it means you see all the failing packages and then uh, not compiling GCC. This stuff on Horizon, this builds in 10 minutes, so um, this is a 2600, we actually can check this, I always, so many numbers, CPU info is, is Ryzen, whatever, uh, Ryzen 7 2700. Um, 8 core from last year, 60 watt skew or something on a mini ITX compute node in closer. I'm currently waiting on the, I've said this a couple of times, as soon as AMD ships those, the 3950X, we will try to run those in those compact 
mini ITX nodes for even hopefully twice the build performance money and you see we certainly need this because just test building this yet yeah, 20 minutes gone 10 minutes LLVM 10 minutes ceiling even on this quite powerful Ryzen and yeah even if this half the build time then five minutes five minutes ten minutes still quite some time to just randomly try whatever is breaking the stuff there you see and on the data center we are running some yesteryear's data center stuff Xeon whatever um, that are a little bit phasing out there and there this stuff builds in maybe an hour total and yeah, there you see of course this is like from four years ago um, to last year's Ryzen and yes yeah, certainly com compiling your compiler in one hour is not amazing and yes yeah, you see even LLVM's Clang code base getting larger and larger everyone adding each and everything in there fun fact if you don't need all the targets you can disable some targets and maybe save a couple of minutes so for example um, by default uh, LLVM builds all the PowerPC, Extensia, Spark, whatever, so you could limit this to, I don't know, four, like, and even then, if you want to use the same LLVM for Firefox, Chromium, or Mesa, then you probably need at least WebAssembler uh, for this native code WebAssembly stuff, your x86 stuff, and some GPU stuff, like at least AMD GPU or something, so these are still like five or so minimum targets of, I don't know, the 20, whatever. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Um, I'm using Debian and uh, comments of the audience, they are using Debian. It's great, you should try it sometime. And for me, Gentoo and Arch. Um, devils, what Arch are the devils shooting? Everything breaks, even Exoc. Um, yeah, well, I will not try Debian. Thank you for offering, I, I don't, I have not spent significant portions of my life keeping this source distribution maintained, so T2 is similar to Gen2, just with also embedded focus. So I run this on all architectures, the unsuccessful, well, this is by the way a running gig, right? Because the Debian, the lovely, friendly Debian people keep calling me like this. Um, and yeah, thanks for that, mates. But um, yeah, I did not spend significant portions of my life the last 20 years to keep this maintained. and. This is also more readable. I even Gen 2 eBuilds are, in my opinion, well, they are somewhat sortable, readable, readable this Python eBuild stuff. But other stuff like Debian, this, as far as I've seen, I'm not really sure if, how they maintain this if all the Debian packages are with the control and data stuff in the tarballs. That looks, and with patches, like patches to this, this looks extremely hard to maintain. I would, I would rather quit IT and open a each coffee there and, and serve coffee than dealing with Debian packages to be honest. And um, then um, here our LLVM here uh, totally nice. Um, yeah so description metadata is that um, most of the stuff is just for humans mostly used is like kind of nearly only the download and priority or something and then the code here totally readable in my opinion. Um, I'm a little bit biased, but in my opinion, the Rock Linux code base that I inherited and still maintain one of the most readable code bases on earth, and that's why I'm loving it. And you need to pry this out of my cold dead hands anyway. Um, and otherwise, um, you've seen the, the recurring audience. I'm getting a little bit tired of the breaking regressions and spaghetti code base of the Linux kernel, and that is why I would rather go microkernel, maybe even my own just for the fun and research. But that's it for today. I hope you learned something. So this shared option stuff here breaks the latest LLVM release. By the way, fun fact, I'm slightly wondering was this, let's try update list LLVM, was this slightly new release candidate or um, a something release candidate? Uh, where are we even? Nine something, I guess. Um, Card package, LVM disk, and yeah, updating. This is just running. Update, LVM. Not really sure. Was there is candidate three? No, there was apparently maybe not. Okay, well, fine. Thanks for watching. Next, we probably try to compile the Linux kernel. Um, anyway, probably just live because why not? And certainly we will find some new uh, build uh, errors and regressions. Commander007 writes, 
Well, he's a noob in the streams, but you are a very educated man. Thanks for that. Subscribing, you know, compiling kernel for me is like jumping from a skyscraper. Oh, okay, well, compiling kernel is just, but maybe tune in for the next live stream because this is getting too long and then no one is watching it. I hope you learned something and see you maybe in a minute for the kernel build. Hey, zero drop frames.